this slick, this wet, this narrow, and this danger. Oh, it goes on the outside. That is a masterclass. The fake on the inside moves out and gets another position there of all places. Hey, welcome back to the channel. This last weekend, we bore witness to, in my opinion, one of the most exciting N24 races we've ever seen. It was fraught with torrential rain, heavy fog, to actually being red flagged throughout the entire evening. Now, in spite of the race itself actually being cut short by more than a half, I still feel like we got the same excitement we would normally get over a 24-hour period, just condensed into more like a 9-10 to hour stint. Among this was, of course, the stellar opening laps by Manti Racing, headed, of course, by their opening driver, Kevin Estra, who strategized very differently to the rest of the field. While everybody else was preparing for the long slog and started their cars on wets, Kevin and Manti thought, well, we've only qualified 11th, which isn't so great for us. Why don't we start the car on slicks, set the car up for wet all the same, and see how many positions we can possibly gain before the rains really kick in and force us to pit for wets. What followed was one of the finest examples of GT driving we've ever seen. I can't wait to get stuck into it with you guys. We're going to be dissecting and analyzing the onboard with Kevin Estre, so let's get straight into it. Just quickly, my thanks for Sebastian Vettel's YouTube channel for cropping this section of the onboard and providing it. I've got the link down below in case you want to watch this clip without my commentary. All right, here we go. The start of the race. This is obviously the very beginning, the very, very first lap. They're coming up on T1 here. Kevin's going pretty much three wide throughout the entire thing. Very, very slippery and bumpy there on the outside. Any of you sim racers would, of course, know that from the R Factor 2 rendering of this track. Already making a move on the inside on the AMG. It, it looks like that might have been move number one, already completed before the big hairpin. Yep, AMG slotted in line behind him. He's got the two R8s out in front, and now coming up to Schumacher S's. That was move number two. <laughs> Took the R8 on the inside immediately. I mean, these guys just aren't ready for this level of move at this point in the race. Everyone's geared up for the whole endurance thing, but I think Kevin's in full attack mode. Taking the inside yet again. It's just crazy to watch this level of racing happening on what are very likely to be cold or at least lukewarm tyres. The team have very clearly got an attack, attack, attack strategy for the first couple of laps, trying to gain as many positions as they can before they're forced to pit. Kevin's still probing, probing the outside. Trying to get a good undercut, I think, through here. But no, thinks better of it. Onto the Nordschleife now for the arguably more exciting part of the track. Let's off the throttle ever so slightly, lets you know that the uh, tyres aren't 100% in it. Of course, it looks like it's started to rain already. So how long those slicks will hold out? Nobody knows at this point. As you form the ubiquitous train through, um, what is this, Hatzenbach? I always forget the corner names at the Nordschleife. There's just so many of them. I think you can be forgiven. As Kevin pushes on the outside, almost gets squeezed out wide, but holds the position, somehow uses the side draft to actually make yet another overtake. Here at Flugplatz, this is insane. This is insane. It's raining, he's on slicks, and these are the moves. I think... He's going to make a pass next to the Lamborghini now. Oh my god. Just the, the level of the runs. He makes it look so easy, but it's anything but. The Lambo tries to hold the inside. Too late on the brakes, though. Kevin maintains the cojones of steel as the rain starts peltering down. Luckily, the the tires are still holding on somehow, though barely here through uh, Schwedenkreuz. I was going to say Schwedenkreuz. Whatever. I'm not German. I'm going to butcher it anyway. Oh, pushing down into the foxhole. Now, you can't see anything from the spray. One of the amazing things about the Nürburgring Nordschleife that many of the drivers talk about is that you, you basically drive through multiple weather conditions in one lap. 
And that's what we're starting to see here. I think Kevin realizes he just cannot push that hard in this car right now. The entire convoy has slowed down a lot. It's still somehow mounting the inside curbs. Whoa, a bit of a skid on the rears. Lost a bit of traction there as the Lambo just gives up on life. Is he... Yes, Kevin blasts past on the outside, along with everyone else. So many overtakes in such a short span of race, in such a short stretch of track. Oh my god. You can see the rear end give out on him there. That, that Porsche right now is squirrely. I mean, that is not going to be fun to drive. Yet he makes the move on the outside. <laughs> Somehow makes it stick. Absolute maniac. He makes it look so easy, but it's anything but under these conditions. Now, luckily, the convoy is actually being held up by first place. The Roa M6 GT3 hasn't actually catapulted on ahead of the rest of the field. So it's giving Kevin a chance to actually keep up. He's now, believe it or not, in fourth position already. He started in 11th, and less than half a lap of the track, he's in fourth. No, he's in fifth. Apparently, I can't count. <laughs> but he's halved it. So looking down at the pink liveried AMG. Coming up in the power section of the circuit, sector two. If this would be called sector two in the N24 layout, I'm actually not sure. But if you were just doing the Norch life, it would be. Yeah, <laughs> ever so slightly more lifting than you would normally do under good conditions. He's already losing the rear of the car since that is insanely brave driving that you're witnessing right there. It's an absolute pleasure to watch even just him being able to keep up and stay in the convoy in these conditions. Alright, coming up to the carousel for the first time. Notice he's driving is much more measured in this section. We get far less aggression. As I think he realizes these are not the conditions to be making moves in under slicks. And coming up into what would usually be called Sector 3, my personal favorite part of the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Very seldom few places to overtake here, so it would be, it would be a minor miracle if he manages to make a move here, though. I mean, anything's possible at this point. Oh my god! No, no, shut down. All right, all right, gets shut down by the AMG. Almost capitalized on that little slip. Down through Whipperman. Taking full curb all the same. Oh my God. Oh, if he was gonna take the outside there. The sheer bravery in this drive. No way, no way. He uses the traffic jam to actually get past the AMG. Takes the inside, blocks him out. Gets into fourth place behind the 911. This, this is a masterclass in GT driving right here, guys. Now, it looks like the rain has eased up a bit on this part of the track. And it looks like Kevin's able to push a little bit harder now. As is the rest of the field. This is just sheer insanity. Getting airborne as you do. Those who've played the R Factor 2 version of this track know it well. Know well how exciting this is. This is, of course, all downhill. If you've ever been here in real life, it is extremely exciting but terrifying at the same time. The downhill slalom. The Beloff S, as they call it. Coming out into the second carousel here. And coming up onto the second final straight on the N24 layout. Now the key here is to stay as close as you can to the guy in front so we can use the slipstream to slingshot past. You're pretty much a shorter position if you end up with this kind of a gap on this straight here heading into Tiergarten. 
So will he be able to get the slingshot? I think you can already see him start to close the gap a little bit. I mean, why am I saying this? Kevin knows exactly what he's doing. You can just watch this. It's a masterclass. It just slingshots right past the 911 on the outside. Luckily, no pass on the grass this time. No need for it. As the rain starts to pelt it down, you've got to, you've got to be thinking, is he wondering, am I going to have the braking performance I need down here after the S to actually stop the car before it hits the barrier? He gets on the brakes nice and early there. Full curb. No slip on the exit. Very good. Already on the podium. Third place, first lap down. From 11th to third in one lap of the N24 layout. This is, this is insane. I mean, this is Sabine Schmidt's territory. Dumps down. Takes a very incisive inside line through there. I find that very interesting. Maybe to avoid the rubber on the outside. Maybe that's just his ideal line. And down through here. Grip levels still seem to be okay. He's got two M6s to overcome. Unless that's a new M4. No, I don't think it is. It's BMW, of course, debuting the new M4 GT3 recently in their press materials. Which is set to supersede the M6s. That's yeah, going through the Schumacher rest. It's an absolute... It's a nail biter. This is <laughs> just. If you had the pleasure of watching this when it was taking place live, I mean, props to you. This was. This feels like a moment in history. One of those notable moments you don't forget about anytime soon. Feeling for grip with the throttle. He's driving is a lot more measured. Very aggressive lines, but a lot more measured on the throttle. He really, he really knows what the limits of the car are at any point in time. He's such a master of knowing exactly what's happening underneath those tires. And the Porsche, of course, so agile through this section of the Nordschleife because that rear engine literally lifts off the throttle, the car turns for you. Something the M6s can't quite say. Far, far larger cars. Harder to get around the circuit. Now just a slight lift here in Flugplatz. Yes, just kind of feeling for grip as he pushes on. Amazing the level of grip and the level of downforce these cars are able to generate as the weather gets worse and worse here. We can see it getting progressively more overcast where they're headed. Again, one track, multiple weather conditions. You still see Kevin's probing is forcing the M6 to take the inside line. Oh, losing the grip halfway through there. Schwedenkreutz is definitely not this car's favourite turn right now as we start to lose reception as he heads towards the foxhole. It's a big, big dip, I guess, not much reception for the antenna. Really nice and slow through the foxhole. They're really worried about what might happen here at Adenauer Forst. <laughs> the car's just slipping. It's just doing like a, a slow speed ballet. Oh man, he, he is just... Feathering for that grip. Nice and composed in line here, hasn't done anything crazy. I think he understands that the the moment for easy moves is over. It's, he's not going to have the convoy blocking people in for him. So he has to really start to strategize moves, especially around the circuit. This slick, this wet, this narrow and this dangerous. Oh, it goes on the outside! That is a masterclass. The fake on the inside moves out and gets another position there of all places. That was an absolute masterclass of faking. Up to second position on lap two.
This is an absolute joy to watch. Now hunting down their main enemy, the Roller Motorsports M6. Absolutely mesmerizing as you wonder to yourself, will he close the gap by the end of Sector 3? Will he manage to get that slipstream by the final straights? Right, pushing out onto the power section again. M6 will likely have him here. I think the 911 generally is the big performer on the agile sections, the more the braking zones, less so the power sections. Though it's an absolute monster on corner exits because it just puts the power straight down over that rear axle. I love the sound of that, that gearbox there. Go to sleep to that every night. It really gives you an idea. You almost don't need to see a speedometer or the RPM, you can kind of tell just based on the sound of that gearbox. So very distinctive and unique to the 911s, the cup cars as well, as he's closed the gap quite a lot coming into Sector 3 here. Oh, got on the brakes very early there, the M6. Oh, Kevin feeling for grip mid-corner. You can tell the car got unbalanced there. Progressively getting on the throttle. I have to say, these guys are so brave under these conditions to mount the inside curbs like that. That is just... That, that's just something else. The amount of confidence and faith they have in these cars. And also the amount of grip it's able to maintain under these conditions. You can still see light rain coming up on the windshield. Coming up here into YouTube corner now. Usually renowned for its poor cambering on the exit. Making cars spin out, but no. No such woes for GT3 cars. Absolutely monsters that outside curb. Obligatory jump. Now coming up to jump number two. Oh yeah, <laughs> that got weightless. Just the amount of bravery required to go flat out through here. Downhill slalom in the wet. Oh my God. Look at how much space that made up on the M6. The 911 is an absolute monster through that section. Now the moment of truth. Is he gonna be able to maintain the gap? You see, they're already starting to catch another car. I don't know what that is. Oh, he, he just didn't get the run on the exit. Now, I think the M6 is starting to swerve to break the draft. He's trying to break the toe. Will it work? Who knows? It seems like there's a car faintly coming into focus ahead of them as well. I'm not sure what that is. Kevin pushing on at what was likely about 270 kph is my guess at that portion of the track, maybe 280 here. Strong, heavy, he oh my god! Squirreling under the brakes. The Porsche, of course, the moment you lift off the throttle, the rear end becomes weightless. Very, very difficult to manage on the braking. Kevin, of course, a master of his craft, so no problem for him, but that, that would have been a code brown moment for us mere mortals. The drone recording the footage. Oh my god, as he tries to take him on the outside around T1. No such luck. Goes for the undercut. No such luck again. Undercut number two, no, just lost too much traction on the corner exit. tell that Kevin is always probing, always using the situations where the drivers ahead are least suspectful or least suspecting of him to make a move. Looking 
very clearly see there's a car up ahead of him there. Seems to be traveling reasonably fast. There must be another GT3. Now we're on lap three. So as you can see, it's all about those diminishing returns. First couple of positions, nice and easy. Last couple, not so easy. Very familiar sensation to all you sim racers out there, I'm sure. What an absolute run. What a masterclass of GT driving. Coming up onto the Nordschleife again for the third time. The Porsche is so, so agile, so quick through here. As the rain starts to pelt down more and more, those tyres have a very limited lifespan on this track. I believe that's a yellow flag. Now, during the course of the race, I believe on the second or third laps, there was a Porsche that uh, set on fire right about here at uh, Hudsonbach, I believe. Which I believe we're going to go past now. Yes, you can see the the fire extinguisher spray all underneath it. What a moment. What an action-packed race. So in the rear of the field, people are just spinning out. People are just having crashes. It's an absolute manic race, this, especially as the weather starts to get worse and worse. As those who risked slick tires start to really see the gamble not necessarily always pay off. And coming up into Fluke Platz yet again. Just a slight lift, of course. And straight on the power again. That that Porsche is so agile, so oversteery. Such good corner balance. He's making up the gap ever so slowly. He's well within the slipstream. You can see the conditions are just progressively getting worse every single lap. As he moves on in on the inside, no. M6 takes the defensive line. Pushes out ahead. That was probably the best exit he's had out of Shreden Courts. The mandatory loss of transmission from the car there. Now they're going to feel for grip it out now. Forced again, yes. Nice and slow through there. Don't want to risk anything untoward. It is, after all, intended to be a 24-hour race. For all they know, it will be. Oh, that car is just slipping and sliding all over the place. It's a nice skating ring, and he takes him on the outside. That's all it took. One little lapse of concentration at Adenauer. As he takes him, and I think we're coming up to Misha's Dacia there. <laughs> yes! Hail Misha, how's it going, bro? Guys, that was absolutely ballistic. Make sure to check out the full race highlights reel. If they upload the full race, it, it was absolutely mind-blowing. I enjoyed every second of this. Even towards the end, it wasn't just the restart. It wasn't just the start. It was just it was a closing hour. It was all the strategy. What an unbelievable race. Don't you just love endurance racing? Make sure to smash that sub step today with future sim racing and real racing content. And until the next one, I'll see you guys later.